So Rick, you were, you talked about the engines on the F-16. You had a part in the, the whole GE Pratt thing, right? We talked about that a little bit last time. On the F-16? Oh yeah. 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 The, uh, yeah. The problem with the F-100 is, if you guys flew the early versions, was that you got a reputation for flying the engine instead of the airplane because it was very temperamental. And the reason it was very temperamental was it was it was wound up as tight as you could get it to get the max performance out of it. Unfortunately, when you do that, you get pretty close to the edge of some of the operating restrictions. And you're either having mechanical problems or you're having aerodynamic problems with the engine. And then Pratt Whitney was a somewhat arrogant bunch. They had the contract for the F-15. They had the contract for the F-16. And the fact that their engine wasn't performing up to snuff was kind of irritating to everybody except them. And so the GE guys on their own money decided to take the B-1 engine, the F-101, and do some tweaking to it to make it a fighter engine. And it didn't take much because in those days, Pratt would wring every ounce out of an engine you can, and it would be absolutely fantastic when it worked. And it was absolutely horrible when it didn't work. And GE's engines weren't quite as performance, but they were a little better in terms of how they would behave if they got into corners of the envelope. So GE started this program called the Derivative Fighter Engine, DFE, F-101 DFE. And they started shopping that around and somebody had to watch them. So they tapped me for that. And there was about a team of about three or four guys, program manager, contracts guy, another engineer and me. And we started figuring out what, what are they doing down there and try to get a, a handle on how, how this thing could fit in the programs. So the TF-30 and the F-14 was another one that was very good when it was good and horrible when it was bad. And the Navy had a lot of trouble with that engine in the F-14. And so they had squirreled some money away from the uh, Congress to do an evaluation of an alternative engine for the F-14. Well, the, the Navy is a little different business-wise than we are, or we were, I was whatever. <laughs> and they decided that they were just kind of not paying a whole lot of attention to the money. So the program manager, a guy named Joe Wood, very smart guy, he calls up the guys at Naval Air Systems Command at Crystal City. He says, listen, we got this engine down here. It's called the F-101 F DFE. And we could use a little money to uh, do some exploring with them so we can get them under contract so we can have a bigger influence on them. Cause this was all being done by G on their own, on their own dime. So we couldn't really tell them what to do. And so the guy said, well, yeah, we can, we can let you have this, uh, I don't know, $10 million or something like that. And Joe says, well, i uh, tell you what, you remember it. And that, that means a military interdepartmental purchase request where money comes from one bag of gold to another bag of gold and you can do what you want with it. <laughs> And they said, okay, we'll send it, uh, we'll send it down there. And uh, the next day this thing shows up, it's a piece of paper and says, here's the money and the charts and the numbers you got to do and all this kind of who. Uh. And Joe runs, takes that money and gets it in the, in the Air Force Bank, runs down to Evendale, which is about a 50 minute drive down the road and puts it on contract. And the next day the Navy comes up and says, we want the money back. I said, sorry, Charlie, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, wait a minute. Oh, that's you awesome. can't do that. Well, we, we did it. <laughs> and so that's what started the F-101 DFE. And then they demonstrated some, some nice stuff with the thing, and it turned into the F-110. And the F-110 started to be a really serious problem for Pratt & Whitney because it was doing good stuff and it was getting attention. And so then, thence commenced the Great Engine War, which is a legendary kind of thing, where 
the Air Force said to Pratt, you better start fixing your motor or we're coming with this other one and we're going to boot you off this airplane over here. And I said, no, you won't. He said, oh, really? So more money went into the F-110 and pretty soon there was a competition for future production of the F-16 between the F-100, which was a Pratt engine, it was originally built for the F-15, and the F-110 for the uh, what could be the rest of the program. And lo and behold, Pratt got kind of stupid again and kind of didn't pay a whole lot of attention. And the next thing you know, we're buying F-110s to put in F-16. That's awesome. And the rest is history. And then the Navy shows up and says, hey, by the way, we like some of those. So, yeah, we'll sell them to you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so they put it into the, uh, I think it was, it was called the F-15D. 14. F4, excuse me, F14D D plus, something like, or the F, F14B plus, something like that. I, I've lost lock. You know, I'm an old guy. I forget <laughs> what I'm but uh, the, the, it really turned out to be better because Pratt got the word and they started fixing the F100. And in the end, it was a matter of picking which one you want because they were both doing, doing what they were supposed to do and not doing the things they weren't supposed to do. And it's there's a guy, guy who worked for me, named John Ogg, real sharp kid. Well, he's not a kid anymore. None of us are. <laughs> and he wrote his thesis on that at MIT about the Great Engine War. If you ever want to read, get bored for tears about how <laughs> you can read it, but it's it's an interesting factual story, and it's part of what the hell's wrong with the programs these days. There ain't no competition. Well, Everything is based on we can save money doing this, and we never do. So, but are you keeping up with the F thirty five engine stuff? Because it seems like history is repeating itself with Pratt. Yeah. It is the, the engine problems. <laughs> it is. I uh, the problem that's that's happening is that there's a bunch of well, there's a bunch of guys, and they're ubiquitous. They just show up. I, I don't think they can, there's farm and grows these guys. Says, <laughs> if, if we do this, we're going to save money. And they never do. I mean, we were going to build the F-111 and everybody's going to use it. And we're going to save money. We didn't. And then we said, well, we're going to build F-4s. Well, we save money there because F-4 is a damn good airplane and it's good for everybody. But it didn't start out that way. The Air Force adapted to the F-4, not vice versa. And the next time it came up was on the Joint Strike Fighter, which said, we can save money by making all these common parts and all this common development and all this common design and all these common pilots and all this common this and all this common that. And you never do. <laughs> and, and and you can see it now, if you would look at an A, B, and C version of an F-35, I'd be, I'd be surprised if you see 10% of the parts that are common. I have no idea, and I haven't worked on it a long time, don't know that. But the whole idea was you were going to save all this money, and you never do. And, I, you know, who am I? I'm just some farm kid out there in Ohio saying, hey, <laughs> Hey, this, this sounds like a good idea. Why don't we do this? <laughs> color, and I said, mm, okay, got it. Well, Rick, yes, sir. Rick, wasn't the F-111 kind of the first iteration of the Joint Strike Fighter? Like well, they wanted everyone it, it started it. out to be two, two airplanes, two missions, two basic missions. The Air Force wanted a replacement for the Thud. It wanted a supersonic, low-level attack airplane, more like an A-111 than an F-111. And the Navy wanted an airplane that would go out there 10,000 miles and carry 17,000 tons of armament and shoot down the bombers before they release the cruise missiles. Well, neither one of those things are gonna fit in the same box, believe it or not, <laughs> for some strange reason. You know, you know, supersonic on the deck versus a long time sit out there and go whoosh, 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 whoosh. And so it didn't work. And 
the reason it didn't work, the Navy and Air Force have different missions. And basically, the airplane that is good for a mission is good for a mission. And an airplane isn't good for several different missions. It's just sort of mediocre for every, all of them. <laughs> God, I can't believe you said that last week, actually. But it, well, it, I, like, it, it feels so nice to have somebody at, with actual credentials. Validation. <laughs> he feels validated. I'm just That's why you're some... the new boss, Gonky. This is, this is why they made you my boss. You've got the address for sending the check, don't you? That's right, Rick. <laughs>